ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to data patterns india limited q1 fi 25 earnings conference call hosted by go india advisors as a reminder all the participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded and now on the conference over to miss monali jain from go india advisors thank you and over to you ma'am yeah thanks via good afternoon everyone and welcome to data patterns india limited earnings call to discuss the q1 fy25 earnings we are on the call mr s rangarajan chairman and managing director ms rekha murthy rangarajan full time director and mr venkat subramanian chief financial officer we must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that company faces may i now request mr rangarajan to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights subsequent to which we will open the floor for questions and answers thank you and over to you sir thank you bunali good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it is a pleasure to welcome you all to q1 fy25 earnings call i hope you had the opportunity to review the earnings presentation available on both the stock exchanges on on our website before we get present the financial results i would like to provide a brief overview of some important updates and key highlights for this quarter as we review our performance for the first quarter of fy25 I'm pleased to report that our commitment to excellence and strategic focus have positioned us favorably, and we started the year on a positive note. During Q1, our revenues have shown a healthy growth trajectory, driven by robust performance in our core segments and successful order deliveries. We are committed to in-house development of strategic products, which will increase our TAM and our and allow growth in the coming years. We have strategically advanced up the value chain. by developing comprehensive systems using reusable building blocks leveraging our existing competencies we spent uh, 54 crores on on new product development initiatives out of the funds raised to qap last year our financial performance reflects the strength of our business model and the effectiveness of our strategic initiatives we see an increase in both our top line and bottom line in line with past years and as per our internal estimates in q1 Our revenue per operation witnessed a double-digit growth of 15 percent. EBITDA demonstrated commendable growth, increasing by 33 percent. EBITDA margins during the quarter stood at 36 percent. We have a robust order book as on date of 1,147 crores. The growth has been seen across all verticals: development orders contributing 43 percent to the top line, and production orders at 43 percent. The broader context of our performance. shaped by the significant transformation underway in india's defense sector the government's initiatives such as aatmanirbhar bharat and make in india coupled with increased capital outlay are driving this change in the recent union budget presentation our finance minister announced an allocation of 6.21 lakh crores for the defense sector for fy25 which is the highest allocation at 12.9% of the total budget The budget sets aside 1.72 lakh crore for capital outlay to bolster the armed forces. We are marking off 1.06 lakh crore for domestic capital procurement, providing further impetus to our neighbour staff. India expects to reach rupees 3 lakh crore annual defence production and rupees 50,000 crore export by FY29. Keeping the sectoral tailwinds in mind, we are committed to sustainable, to sustaining a revenue growth rate of 20 to 25 percent. A major margin between 35 to 40 percent. We aim to capitalize on the following opportunities: focus on fire control radars, expand radars and smaller radars for UAVs, ensuring cost competitiveness with in-house IP in radars. Develop electronic warfare products to meet the requirements of Army, Air Force, and Navy. Provide military radios, radio relays, and other equipment required for our services. We continue to do product development. to narrow the gap between what we import and indigenously what is available at this point i'll pass the floor to venkat for his comments thank you sir good afternoon ladies and gentlemen 
We are happy to present our strong performance highlights of Q1. Let's delve into the overview of our financial research. In Q1, Q1 FI25, revenue is up by 16 percentage, 1,104 crores, which was in line with our estimates. Development contracts contributed to 31 percentage of the revenue. Production contracts 15 percentage and service contracts approximately 11 percentage of Q1 revenue, highlighting the diversity in our revenue stream. Similarly, our order book keeps growing and to that 1017 crore as on 30th June, which is driven by growth both in development and production orders. The order book today is 1147 crore, including the orders negotiated in July 2024. More development orders are generating and translating to higher production revenue. Profit before tax to that 43.5 crore, while profit after tax witnessed an uh, impressive 27 percentage growth, reaching 32.8 crore. Our net debt free balance sheet reflects prudent financial management. As of 30th June 2024, we hold over 670 crore in cash, cash equivalents, and investments in liquid funds, underscoring our financial strength and liquidity. Overall, we delivered a strong performance in Q1 and are confident of a steady growth momentum for the full year. With this, we will now proceed to the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Deepen Vakil from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir, and congratulations on our steady uh, execution. So my first question is on the lines of, sir, uh, how do you see the uh, new order win momentum going ahead uh, for FY25 as to uh, what kind of uh, quant what quantum of orders are you expecting in going ahead and which will be the areas where you are seeing uh, new orders to come up, come from? Uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned in the last quarter call, uh, last quarter also, uh, this year we expect overall 4,000 crores order intake, new orders. Uh, we have, um, uh, I think this about a couple of hundred crores already revealed. We expect the orders to start coming in the probably end of Q2, mostly in Q3 and Q4. Uh, uh, that's the order of intake we're expecting. And uh, it, it is going to be based on you know, radars, electronic warfare, uh, and these kind of uh, avionics, where we already delivered some products and repeat orders are expected in all these areas. And mostly it's out of what we delivered products earlier, but that's the rest of the this year. Okay. Uh, so, so you also mentioned about uh, the trend that you have done towards uh, new product development. So, any so any uh, highlighting uh, product that uh, you'd like to mention about for the new product development and the kind of opportunity that can arise from that? It's a bit premature. I don't want to say an open call uh, exactly what products are developing. That is why I've given a brief background on this, includes a whole range of radars. Uh, and electronic warfare equipment plus uh, communication systems. Uh, this is in line with uh, whatever we decided a couple of years back, that we should start developing products which are not, today not available in the country, and we're importing these products. And uh, so that is why we raised money. We started spending the money, building products, it's coming out quite well. So maybe in the next few months, uh, once the product is out, once we demonstrate, we start looking at how the revenue mix can happen after that. It's a bit premature to uh, got it, sir. Uh, so I have a few more questions, but I'll join back with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Gupta from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. 
Good evening, sir. Uh, good set of numbers. Two questions. One is the emphasis of Ireland and the comment. What kind of uh, market are we seeing in this uh, in this comment and Ireland system uh, in electronic warfare? So, what kind of what kind of plan do we expect in the next five years? Second is uh, on your slide six. I see that there's a certain trend which is given to us, where usually the first quarter is weak, followed by improvements in the second and third quarter, and obviously fourth is the best. So do we expect the same kind of trend in FY25 as well? Okay, uh, I can't be very specific on the time blocking by LinkedIn comment. Uh, there are a number of programs which India we are developing with DRDO. And once it certifies into a production contract, uh, we expect back-to-back -back orders to come to us. Um, uh, I don't have an exact number, but the number of other inquiries and make one, make two programs are happening uh, yeah. from uh, Air Force for uh, Ellington Comet. There are also airborne Ellington Comet requirements coming up. I've not summed the total value, but um, but we are uh, actually working on those areas along with DRDO. With good DRDO, we over the last uh, maybe more than a decade, we have developed a number of products which is world class in both common and emerging areas. So we expect that uh, that should stand us in good stead and address the market against important systems as and when the inquiries come. We're already working with uh, DRDO in some of the programs in these areas. So uh, this is an important area for us, one of the important areas. And other other part of this is uh, there are two other parts to come into the link in EW, yeah. which is the radar warning receiver and yeah. the jammer uh, electronic countermeasures. So we are also working on them. So uh, we are working on all of uh, EW systems. We hope that uh, this will all uh, uh, you know give us a substantial kind of revenue years years to come. But I can't comment on the exact number of the present moment because too many programs are there. We don't know which we will win and where we are going to go. But yes, there is a, we are committed to this area of operation. We are investing a lot in these areas. Coming to the second okay. question, um, on um, how our revenue flow goes quarter to quarter. Uh, traditionally, uh, as a company, we have been quarter four heavy in all of our uh, earlier pre-public IPO days. With more than 80% is uh, quarter four. Uh, with the order book, with us for one and a half years, we have visibility of orders. We've been managing to uh, make the order, it's not so much quarter four driven, so that we are also profitable in the quarter one, two, three, four. But uh, again, uh, giving back to what you said, quarter one will tend to be the lowest, and as we go along, hopefully quarter two, quarter three should go up. But this year, we, we are going to have a, probably a larger quarter three and quarter four rather than a quarter one, quarter two, as we see it, because the nature of orders we receive, and also on the offtake from our customers based on their production requirements. They are dependent on both, not just the nature orders, also for which the customer is willing to take at what point in time. So looking at that, I think quarter one, quarter two will be uh, a bit uh, less. Quarter three, quarter four should be higher, is what we see as a law. Okay, uh, thank you. Actually, um, I had a few more questions on the LinkedIn and comment part only because I know these are very important and critical platforms that you've been developing and working on. Seek clarity call from you. And that will be all on my side. Okay. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Harshit Kaparya from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just wanted to uh, get a sense on the order inflow which you mentioned of 1,000 crores. Uh, would it be largely driven by uh, product or would it be uh, driven by the developmental part uh, for this year? I think this year it will be developed by, it will be driven by earlier products which are delivered. Repeat orders uh, expected now. Maybe some of the development which you're doing now can also pan out to the order. We will know this towards the end of third quarter or fourth quarter. But uh, what we have in mind is mostly towards already designed products and repeat orders have to come. And uh, when you say repeat orders, would you be able to give a sense on the system? Will it, uh, let's say on the radar side, uh, are we talking about the Ashwini, uh, Rudra radars, all those systems? Hey, you see, Ashwini, you know, it's, it's a 
it's a competitive bid. So we do not know which version we'll get. So that is why we don't want to go uh, contract specific because we don't have control on the market. So we have a bunch of contracts which we expect. We expect that some of them or most of them should uh, come our way. There are some specific contracts which we have developed as a unique vendor. Hopefully when that happens as a repeat contract, we should get back-to-back -back, uh, single vendor contracts. So we have a bunch of them. I don't want to get into exactly which contracts uh, because I, I, I'm not in a position to exactly say when what will happen because this is uh, government driven orders. So I don't have absolute control on the timing nor on the contract. But we have a bunch of contracts. We expect that we should get 18 to 1000 crores. Uh, kind of new orders uh, this year going ahead. And uh, the contract size, would you be able to give us a sense? Will it be like sub 500, uh, anyone which could be a, f a little, let's say 500 yeah. crore plus, any one big order? Uh, no, that is all depends on when the company could be win, it can be sizable order. But we are not looking at that kind of, because when a tender comes, we can't predict the outcome of a tender, an open tender. So we don't consider, when I make a commitment on uh, behalf of the company on uh, out, of, out of expected, we, we normally go not uh, covering the tender contracts where we have a probability, but we are not sure we will get it. So when we give an estimate, it is more on what we already developed and what we expect as single vendor contracts. The other things may happen. If it happens, it becomes uh, additional to on top of this, whatever is projected to you. Okay. And given uh, the current uh, visibility you have, even for FI26, would that 1,000 crore run rate continue or do you think any spot uh, can happen? Because we were also looking at integration in a bigger way rather than just being a component supplier or a subsystem supplier. So any anything on FI26 which can come to us? Uh... Well, see, we, see, one thing we are doing is slightly different from others is that we are developing products for future. Uh, that is why uh, we raise money and also we retain money in terms of giving the reading of dividend. Retaining money because we will do a lot of product development going ahead and also infrastructure development to address future manufacturing requirements. We will be spending on capex both on development as well as on uh, actual infrastructure. So the idea is to scale the company substantively uh, from what kind of course we've been doing. See, the market size is very, very large. and. Uh, uh, we are used to importing these systems from various countries. Government is very clear that uh, this cannot go on, and they need to. We are putting a lot of policy in the framework to see that it is truly made in design in India. It's Indian content year and year, we are increasing Indian content percentage as a mandatory requirement. With all this, our idea is uh, since we have specialized for many years in building component subsystems or large part of the systems all these years, we decided that we build the complete system ourselves. So that is why we have committed ourselves to and uh, raise money. And we are all in the process of development. Development is started. We are building the products. So as soon as the products uh, become available and certified and flight tested and all things like that, the expectation is that it will also substantially increase our uh, order intake. Idea is to increase the time very large to 10,000 in the course of 24 hours of time. And so a percentage of that we should be able to get an order. We also look at uh, a very, very high speed growth in the coming years. That's the reason we're looking at it. So I can't specifically talk about 25, 26, or 26, 27. This is a series of products we're doing. It's not one product, it's a bucket of products, a bunch of products we're designing. And all of them will make, uh, you know, look at the address of the core market. So that is what, other than the competitive bids which you participate in. These are all, uh, what we're doing development is uniquely different from what is already available in India. We hope that it will pan out properly. That is the commitment which is developing products. Fair enough, sir. And uh, another question is on, uh, we have been uh, probably one of the companies who have developed seeker missiles, uh, sorry, seekers for the Brahmos missile. So I have the final selection done uh, between you and the other PSU company who, would, who have also uh, develop the products, or is it still some final conclusion is there, and uh, when are is, when the results are expected to come out? Uh, uh, Seeker, uh, I think government is talking about it now. Okay. But uh, we don't we don't have an active inquiry at the present moment. We expect that uh, considering that uh, we've got a lot of orders now, uh, and looking at uh, uh, not importing Seeker and making India. 
we believe that uh, we will get an opportunity shortly to address the requirement. And as of now, I can't comment on it because we haven't told the contacts at hand. But we expect that going ahead. Uh, our belief is that uh, we should be also having uh, contacts going ahead. So and, uh, the contact will get split between you and the the PSU, or there's only it's like yeah. one uh, one day call. Uh, it's expected. Obviously, we are two vendors, so two vendors should be considered. Is what we expect. Okay. But you know, I can't talk for the government. So we are talking future, and I really can't talk for the government. But we are hopeful. Uh, let me say that we are really hopeful. We have a good product, so we are hopeful that uh, they should be able to hear from us also. Sure. Um, so as soon as it happens, we'll announce it once it happens. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. And this last question on radar, uh, uh, there has been a development on the Uttam radar, and one there is one private company already there. Uh, they are also looking at more companies. Would data pattern be uh, would be participating in that, uh, or would be staying it out? Yeah, I don't know whether. Uh, they are really looking at another vendor and all that. I don't know where you heard this, but I'm not aware. It's just requirement. Presently, there is one vendor and also there is an important vendor uh, equivalent for this. But the opportunities are very large. There are other platforms. And also, if better products are available, maybe somebody will consider that. We are uh, we are uh, addressing uh, these areas in uh, new products. The outcome is not very sure. But yes, we are seized the requirement. And trying to see what we can do, what we can do about class products and other products. We are working on this. Not relevant at all. But uh, I'm not very really sure uh, what you're saying is. I can address. Uh, I can answer that question. But yes, in a general category, we're addressing that and looking at products which can be world class uh, in this category. Fair enough, sir. No issues. Uh, um, all the best uh, for future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Kaundanya from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Couple of questions. The first one, continuing from the previous participant's question. Uh, so just on the Sukhai upgrade program, I think we understand there's, all, there's also a plan to upgrade the radars as well with Virupaksha radars, which are also kind of an extension of this Uttam radars and all. So just trying to understand, you know, if there's an opportunity for data patterns to participate in this, if not just specific to radars, I mean, what is our total opportunity size that we can address in this total upgrade program? If you can provide some color on that, please. Yes, so we are interested in this security upgrade program. Um, we are trying to develop products in these programs. We don't have an order and inquiry. We are uh, we are trying to develop products in this program because the program itself is fairly large. I don't know how the selection process will be going ahead, but we want to be. Uh, part of the one of the participants in this program. So towards this, we are doing a lot of investments and building products. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, we understand that uh, the radar for Sukhoi upgrade program is an extension of uh, Uttam radar, kind of modification of Uttam radar. Correct us if, I, if that's wrong. So just trying to understand if that were to be the if that were the case, will that be an open tender basis or will it again go to go to your peers on a nomination basis? How does it work in general? You are talking about a future program. How can I comment on it? Yes. These are all government initiatives. I can't talk for them. No. That's why I said we know about the requirements. We understand the requirements are large. We are committed to working, uh, to providing solutions and products in this category. How government will react? What will they do? I really don't know. Uh, obviously, we will try our best to see that part of it or one of it comes to us. This is our interest. Because these are all the areas where uh, we have uh, very uh, strong competencies. So obviously we will try to do our best to see if we get something in this. But future will say what really happens. But we are we are investing ahead of the, in these areas. That's all I can say now. I I won't be able to talk on behalf of Government of India. Okay, I understand. You understand that, you. obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got so, it. So, uh, we are your uh, decision. So we really can't, or HA division, so the three large players in the division. And definitely I'm not a player in the division. I can be a contributor to our division making based on the product capabilities. Fine, sir. That's understood. 
So my second question is on the order flow. So I'm not sure if you have already answered this question, but I mean, this quarter we saw a dip per se on the order flow front. So just trying to understand, is it something to do with the timing mismatch or how should we look at it? If you can help us understand that, please. Uh, the order flow is a bit delayed. Uh, we expect the borders to happen in the third quarter, fourth quarter now. Uh, we would rather have it in the first two quarters, obviously. But that is not happen because there are certain trials being undertaken and the business making is a bit uh, delayed. We hope that we come properly in trials and we get the orders in the third or fourth quarter. So there is a delay, but we don't believe, uh, we don't believe that, we do believe that we will get the orders as we committed earlier to you, the lab. Uh, maybe towards the second quarter, service should start coming in. Third and fourth quarter, we should get a larger order book. That's what we think. Okay, fair enough. So, sir, if I may ask one last question on the margins in this quarter, I mean, we saw a good jump in margins. Is it something to do with, you know, a greater share of your service orders and the production orders in the uh, execution mix and therefore the margins? How should we look at it? If you can help us provide some color on that, please. Yeah, margins, as, uh, as we have uh, already uh, you know, in internal estimates, the margin varies with the contracts we see. Uh, we have been speaking changes. It depends on the contract. Some contracts where IP is very high, where we don't import anything, we design everything from scratch. Then what happens is uh, our margins are higher. Uh, sometimes you have to integrate with the margin you can lower. Sometimes you have a competition uh, in an area when margins become tend to be lower. So it's a, it's a mix of programs. So we believe that uh, these are sustainable going ahead, uh, for, for depending on the contracts we execute. Uh, idea is that we simply do all the IP development in India, and we import very little. Actually, we don't import except components. We don't import at all any systems and subsystems, uh, yeah, even building blocks to make in India. Um, we, 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 we margins look uh, to be better for you. But more importantly, what you, none of us are looking at is that these have been developed a uh, uh, couple of years back, three years back. Every year we invest in product development and we write out product development as part of the revenue expenses. We don't calculate it, so we don't see all of them. Yes. But this is a longer term play and developing products. So when the production order starts coming in, you see the bottom line is picking up. That's what you see what's happening. But this has been the way we've been building products all through our life. It's something new here. Going ahead, we do large systems where some systems have to be procured and integrated. Obviously, the margin profile will come down, but the size of business will be higher. So we need to look at how to scale the company's upside will be. But uh, we don't want to look at the uh, low margin uh, in a normal run business. We want to be a IP driven business. And towards this, so we are spending a lot of money in product development. That's why we went to IP also. See that we build the products, which is 100% designed in house. And we build not just the electronics, we build the mechanicals, we build all of those things, uh, design all of them, so that the complete control of the entire equipment is with us. That's what we're trying to do. It's tough, but we've been working on it for many years to build the capability like that. And we want to strive to build more capability to see that uh, we build that uh, all the entire systems in India and not look at, uh, you know, buy and make. Other than that, we want design and make what we're trying to do. Sure. And sir, uh, just last question. So this kind of surprise was already considered when you gave 45% margin guidance for the year, right? I didn't give 45%. See, every person is talking on behalf of the putting more words in the mouth. I'm very worried about these things. I didn't give 45%. I said 35 to 40% is what I told in the first call in, uh, I think, May. I said 35 to 40%. I would rather say something and uh, beat my estimates rather than say something and fall back. So I've been saying 35 to 40. I never said 45. I don't know uh, who said it. Fair enough, uh, sir. But Thank I would you. love to do 45. Uh, uh, <laughs> Colleague, I definitely love to do, but it's just what happens. But today, uh, uh, we, we have to look at what kind of mix of orders we're going to contract, you know. And this, uh, we made a budget for the board, and uh, we will be looking seriously how to uh, build as we go along. But uh, yeah, we're looking at 35 to 40 percent is what we're looking at. Sure, sir, understood. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, sir.
Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Pawan Kumar Gajwani from City. Please go ahead. If the question is around, uh, I'll go to side number 28. There is an increase of around 400 million in intangible assets. Can you just help us elaborate on this increment? Uh, can you come again? I, your voice is a bit uh, not very clear. Can you repeat the question, yeah. please? Yeah, on slide number 28, there has been an increase of around 400 million in intangible assets. Can you help us understand this increment about? See, uh, see what we are doing this time, unlike earlier days, uh, is that we are doing substantial product development. So, we have taken about trying to close the market, we are trying to build uh, on the POP to build uh, products, not against contracts. And that is how we tell that, uh, how do I increase the total addressable market of 2,000 crores, what we are addressing now, to 15 to 20,000 crores. You have to scale the company to a core company or a micro core company. I need to be able to have products to address the market. The other way is we tie with foreign regions, bring the products to the world share and uh, look at the uh, lowest court uh, kind of thing which, which everybody else is doing. Against doing that, we decided uh, let us build the IP and build the product here. But then have the products. These products are to be demonstrated, flight tested, go through certifications, participate then in tenders and then try to win contracts. We do that, uh, our cost is much lower than uh, a, com a competitor who imports and integrates. So we have a flexible uh, uh, you know, margin, so we need to address the market, uh, maybe more competitors is what we thought. And since we have done a lot of product development earlier, we use the uh, building blocks to try to reduce uh, the, the uh, risk of development and also time frame to develop the products. Accordingly, we got clearance to go and you know what the CAP done. So once we started doing this, the product uh, conceptualization took some time. How to do this? The design fundamental principles. Now we have started building the products. So these are all now uh, uh, shown as an intangible asset. Most of the intangible asset will be 80 percent or 85 percent will be terms of inventory uh, materials which is bought against these programs and products, and which is getting converted into actual products. So these are all at the present moment that are shown as intangible assets. Thank you, sir. This helped us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Anvadhan, I just have one question on... Uh, Amit, know, can you come a little more closer to the device? You're not audible. Uh, yeah, is, it, is it fine now? Yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to understand um, in FY25 and 26, um, you know, seems your business with HAL and BAL is still very significant. Um, you know, you have any impact of um, any potential delays, um, especially to HAL when you supply machine computer and avionics for um, cages and other platforms? Um, there are delays. We hope the delays don't continue. And they pick up. We have orders for hand. There are some delays in uh, accepting deliveries. Uh, we've we've been talking to them as long well as. Uh, and so since there are some delays, we are trying to, uh, uh, you know, deliver some of the products so that our commitment to uh, board and what we done is actually being delivered. So we are, uh, you know, mixing products and delivery. But I don't know future how long the delivery will be. Honestly, I do. I don't have a, an idea on this. We hope that the delays will continue. And sure. My yeah. My question was more around yeah. My question was more to understand for you, in case there is a potential LD on HL, I don't know. Um, for potential delays, how does it impact you back to back? Yeah, LD on HL has no impact on me. If uh, we deliver delay to HL, then there is an LD with HL. Uh, you know. Um, Charges on us, then there is an issue. But here we are ready. The delay may be an acceptance or whatever can be based on their manufacturing needs. We will not have any LD on those things. It's not expected. Sure. It happens and we very surprised. Very, very clear. Very clear. Second and last question is more on um, your revenue, um, particularly from these two PSUs plus 
um, your exports in 25 and 26. Um, you've been a large, um, you know, one of, one of the decent um, component exporters to the Western world, both Israel and potentially, if I'm not wrong, you know, some other European buyers. Um, how do you think um, your exports will move in 25 and 26? Uh, firstly, uh, the market is opened up, huge market opened up is in India. So our focus is on the Indian market. Uh, from earlier, we are using the DRDO building blocks and subsystems and selling to DRDO uh, and then developing with DRDO rather. So when the production order happens in PSC, we get a part of the production order and basically what we design. This is the model. This continues to be a model. Only thing we try to do a larger portion of that with DRDO. But we are also now scaling to directly address MOD requirements. Where you cannot do part of the system, you have to build a full system because the tender requires you to show the full system. So towards that, we are developing products and the various category of make one, make two kind of things and participating in tenders and trying to win tenders. So that work is all and so on. These are typically larger orders because it is required one directly to the users so a full system. So we try to do that. This is mainly the focus area of what we're doing. And what we're doing now is developing products against this OEM requirements, direct requirements from uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and also where some upgrade programs are happening, so that we can do part of the upgrade by building our own products and sort of relying on uh, imported technology. So these are two areas we are trying to really uh, funnel, develop products, and uh, get our growth. That's our main area. But yes, we've got some contracts from uh, from uh, from abroad. Uh, this mainly from, we've not got much product orders from Israel. We've got, uh, earlier we used to develop products for uh, a UK company. Uh, it's a worldwide uh, defense area. So we continue to build that. In 2013, we've been building uh, our design products there. And that is, a, you know, found favor, and they're getting a lot more orders. Back to back, the orders are increasing to the UK company, and we do delivery, monthly delivery to this company. Even during COVID, we're delivering monthly, we're very happy. So we, we continue to get some contracts. We also participated in some requirements in Europe as well as in South Korea. So we use some radar orders from them. We we'll designed by us in India and we'll be exporting it. Export started in three four months. We should start. Uh, we're just getting export clearance from government. So we should start doing that. So we will do this. Uh, uh, probably about 100 plus crores of orders we have, which we'll execute in the course of some of them, uh, most of them will get to this year. We expect more orders to happen from the UK uh, in February to come, but the more orders will happen. But uh, at the moment, uh, this is not a very large percentage of our order book. It's probably 10 15 percent of our order book at the present moment. So, but uh, going ahead, we would like to do more of exports. But presently, the focus is India because the opportunities are very large and real here. And uh, we will, but going ahead, three years, five years from now, I think we will focus on outside India opportunities and, and also focus once the good products are coming out, all the opportunities, what we design and do here. The same thing is, uh, you know, use of across the world. So we will start uh, diversifying outside India as you go along. Sure. Any, you know, can I have a quick last one, if you allow? Um, yeah, yeah. So any developmental, you know, in terms of 1,000 crore this year, and, you know, whatever you expect next year. So in 25 and 26, any specific developmental uh, significant orders that we should think in mind for uh, data balance? In, you know, I'm sorry if you've mentioned this sir. Let's see what happens uh, we have a we're looking at a thousand two thousand five hundred thousand it's a four order we hope that those goes to happen which of them happens this year which happens next year i'm not very sure so we we, we know, have an idea but there's no control over delays so that's why i said but largely these orders as i see it is all already developed orders of course see what happens in all of them those is developed which in fact repeat exactly is not zero one you know repeat some customization also happens. So some developer takes place. So these are large contract orders, large size orders for us, and very important to us. So we can't classify in production orders because the developer content is very limited. So, but mostly it's a repeat contract what we're expecting and what we already deliver. Okay, okay. Thank you very much and uh, good luck, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Utrani from IISL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Sorry for if I've missed the question. So we've seen a material decline in the order inflows for FY24 and 1Q as well. 
so going forward in which segment like we are expecting a major inflows and how, how our uh, order inflows look like for fy25 and similarly for fy26 so um, as a discussion was asked earlier expecting probably an order intake of daily 2030 this year this is fy2526 is what we expect uh, we got some orders in the first quarter but the order intake has been a bit delayed than what we would like but i think towards q3 q4 we should start getting the orders as what we think uh, sir so what did we more towards the development or production orders uh, should from that uh, this is most to be repeat orders of what we delivered earlier okay and so uh, there sir two mention categories like underwater and the order book and one is tank so what sort of products we are actually supplying in this and who are the customers uh, i think there is a contribution of around 3 or 2% Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, sir, in the order book, we have mentioned uh, there the breakup of underwater and tanks, like the contributing around three and two percent respectively. So, which are the products and which who are the customer in this segment? The tanks means it will be BRD or CBRD. We are doing some work for them on some of their loading systems. We got an order that is under uh, design, and hopefully, we should deliver this year. And for underwater, we work with a lab called NPOI. And in this field, there are two labs in the area. We do underwater uh, sonar and uh, uh, torpedoes and things like that. We work with these labs uh, for quite some very many years, and uh, we have some orders from NPL uh, which we are executing. Again, fully designed as uh, solutions for uh, NPL. So I don't want to get into which exact product because they may not be the NDAs we signed with them, and they may not like us to disclose an open public what we developed with them. But uh, underwater, we work with two labs. Okay. Okay. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of C. A. Garvid Goyal from Invest Analytics Advisory LLP. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you yes. are. Good evening, sir. Congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is: uh, I was uh, checking your previous earning presentations, uh, where you used to guide for uh, 25 to 30 percent top line growth. Uh, then uh, it got reduced to 25 percent, and in recent PPTs it is 20 to 25 percent. So uh, further, if I look at uh, Y on Y growth last year and this quarter too, uh, we are showing only 15 percent growth uh, in our top line. And uh, same numbers are there for bottom line if I exclude the interest income uh, which we are getting on the QIP money, right? So uh, my question is: uh, What is wrong in In terms of executing the order book, are we facing any challenges uh, because of which we are not able to meet our own guidance? Kindly put some color on this. And uh, secondly, uh, like uh, previous participant also mentioned about uh, delays uh, in supplying to the uh, HAL, right? Uh, due to some uh, engine supply uh, falling short uh, from GE. So, uh, how do you see uh, this? Uh, this is going to impact for uh, uh, for our next nine months, sir. See, I don't. I don't remember saying 25 to 30 percent even the previous. Uh, Water. I've always said it's 2025. I don't know how it became under 2030. So I'm not changing my guidance. What I did say last quarter is I remember the top line was at 2025, but we maintain a 30% growth in the bottom line. Is what we said. And somebody was asking the arithmetic doesn't work out and all that. I also answered the question. So we expect a larger bottom line growth than top line growth. Is what we said. Top line may grow. But uh, at least the top line growth is going to be there. You know, we have a 30% uh, bottom line growth, is what we mentioned, as I remember last time. Anyway, coming back to this um, on on uh, the flatness of quarter one, quarter two kind of thing, and uh, why the revenues are not growing. So this depends on the contracts which we have, and which is executable for the for the quarter. Sometimes what happens, the customer doesn't want the delivery. You know, there are two parts. With one, whether we can deliver it. Within the time frame of quarter one, quarter two, or second is that the customer wants it to be delivered. So in these cases, we there are some large contracts which we can't develop and deliver in one quarter or two quarters. It takes a year, year and a half. So we may also project it to be end of this year or next year. Some delivery is a large contract happening. Another thing is happening there. We are going as per schedule. And yes, we could de- uh, deliver a few products, but uh, there is a customer acceptance delay over there, so we cannot deliver there. The products are ready. So we come because of acceptance issues in terms of uh, customer requirements. So this is what uh, I was telling the last uh, uh, Amit. I think he asked me this question. So uh, this is something which we can't control. 
But what we need to have is a larger order book and more product to be, uh, you know, manufacturing. So if there is a, you know, some other product won't go, we kick in with some other products, which is also ready. This is what we're trying to do. We, we have an order book and we expect some contacts to happen. And then you take advanced action on products we expected, which can be quickly delivered to customer also than me. We try to push it through. So we do all, we have to do all this to see that the revenue model is, uh, and the delivery model is happening properly. But our model, in, if you take data patterns, uh, traditionally we've been a two four uh, focused organization and delivery. Uh, we managed to make it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And you see Q1 will be smaller, Q2 will go gradually up, and Q4 will be a, the largest kind of delivery will happen before, but that is in line with the government uh, requirements. Normally, you skew ports and click uh, be there. In production order, they're able to actually send something in Q1 and Q2 in line with what they expect. But this is largely what it is. And I did tell somebody, one of the other callers, I said that you see only Q1 and Q2 will be slightly more, uh, 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 you know, it will not be growing very fast, but Q3, Q4 is going to be our quarters uh, this year, is what I said. But uh, even if uh, some delays happen with the customers, I don't think it should affect us because we should uh, ship some of the products the customer wants. There are other requirements which can get shipped. So we focus on areas where customer wants deliveries and put our effort there, is what you're thinking. But I don't think it's all contracts are like this. One or two may happen, which, uh, especially with some government customers, some delays may happen. Um, but that should not affect us largely is what is. Our internal plan is to see that that doesn't affect us. Understood, sir. Uh, secondly, sir, you mentioned uh, 1,000 CR order inflow this year. So is it for FY25 or FY25 and 26 uh, aggregate basis? It is uh, FY25, 26. In actual year, the next 10 months, is uh, 10, 10 months is what we are expecting. Some orders are already coming, some orders are quoted, which will uh, which come in, come in yet to quote, and then it should start happening. So we have a list of orders which we expect to happen. Uh, so that is why it's an 18 to 24, so we should have an order intake this year. Uh, Anirudh, uh, all of my questions are answered. Thank you very much and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Singhal from Naredi Investments. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question. In Q4, concurrent, uh, our two contract uh, delayed due to inspection not done by a customer. So what is current status? And out of this, how much uh, we book the revenue in Q1? I don't want to give you specifics, uh, Abhishek, if you don't mind. It's an open conversation. I don't want to be so specific in each contract, which customer has not been taken in good spirits or good uh, by the customer or uh, the market. So, I will answer that specifically. Yes, they are all happening. Whatever we told you, issues are there. So it's all getting addressed. And one by one, things are getting shipped. And uh, we are in touch with the customer and things are getting shipped. We are trying to see that it doesn't affect the delivery mechanisms uh, by having other contracts, other products uh, delivered. So we're going to mix. And so, we're also internally discussing how our manufacturing has to be done to see that if there are going to be some uh, rather produce more and the such lesser required. So that is the strategy of following, so this should not happen as a regular uh, feature. So, uh, we understand it, but I you know it's not correct to get into very specifics on these areas. I hope you appreciate it. Okay, and sir, second question. In Q1, our uh, revenue from service segment is 11%. So, going forward, what is revenue split for FI25? Uh, yeah. Overall, uh, so the same year, it will be around uh, 10 to 11 percentage, but uh, Q2, Q3 will be slightly lesser. But overall, year, it will be 11 percentage, uh, 10 to 11 percentage. Okay, thank you so much, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Manan Wandu from Walmart, from Walford PMS. Please go ahead. 
thank you for the opportunity uh, i just wanted to clarify one thing uh, in the opening remarks you said something about exports to be 50 50% by fy29 did i hear that correctly okay okay i was talking about government of india their notification they said we need to export to be the crores by 29 these are all uh, statements made by our government uh, government officials not mine so i just repeating that the opportunity is a large government is thinking of large opportunities to create in and manufacturing and uh, defense requirement uh, which can either be exports or consumption in india a large requirements are we only talking about that Correct. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, and uh, in the presentation, the uh, capex is mentioned as around 150 crores over two years. So, can you will you be able to specify what are you spending it on? Uh, it was actually the uh, past few years of capex is not a decision, but uh, we plan to you know augment our capex. to the need of uh, contract specific requirements uh, whenever we get a contract probably we will be spending another about uh, 150 crore plus uh, over the next two years that is the plan okay okay and uh, in the opening remarks sorry i missed one more thing uh, what is the total addressable market for the current uh, product portfolio that we have actually you know we don't look at it like that like that this is a this is a very difficult question to answer See, you know, traditionally we have been building subsystems in DRD, you know, and there are specific opportunities to address, and those opportunities will get converted from production orders based on the year and sales uh, production back to back we get. Then we look at the opportunity in future, but again, that we delay with that, and this is how we've been going. Uh, can we do that work? But off late, what has happened is because of the uh, 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 you know export imports being not prepared by our MOD. and services emo has stopped that so the number of urgent requirements coming up with the services and those back to back that kind of urgent requirements in the audio has to deliver quickly so we are able to actually deliver some systems quickly to the audio to address this uh, requirement that few things have come up very handy for us because we can do all of the systems in house so that has been happening Uh, so I can't give you a just a touch on the exact time. What is it presently, and what we are addressing percentage? It doesn't. It's not working like that. But what we are started doing is to address uh, uh, questions like this, and also build strategy in the company. We are looking at uh, specific opportunities, which is visible opportunities coming from Modi now, and we have uh, dotted down the visible opportunities where the players are not very many. And uh, we need to be designed in the opportunities. So towards addressing those opportunities, we raise money to build products, which is what we're doing now. Present engagement. You look at those opportunities. It will be about fifty to twenty thousand crores by the addressable market to the addressable market. We hope that we are able to participate in those markets, address those opportunities, and convert them into revenues. This is the intent. We are working towards this intent and developing products in those areas. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. That's it from us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Aditya from Sovelo Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is uh, more on the lines of the subsystems. Like, um, uh, I understand that your intent is to have IP and develop uh, the products in house. But when it comes to subsystems, sub, I mean the subsystems of your system, how much of it is, uh, say, locally procured, and how much of it you are dependent on uh, imports uh, and your resilience to say global supply chain shock. We import all the electronic components. Uh, we design design the printer circuit boards. We design the mechanical parts. Uh, some mechanical, uh, you know, some drives or some sensors in the mechanics room may have to be imported because not made in India. Largely, we try to do Indian systems. So, other than some electronic components and very complex printer circuit boards, which uh, we need to get it done from abroad, design being done by us. Uh, rest are uh, largely in India. Very few companies, really, some 
main code of the digital promotion systems they come from abroad we don't need to import in india so whatever is made in india we try and maximize in this country import is uh, a low cost portion of our, our overall cost structure uh, and, and of course there are companies so the major import companies is india that is all done in india okay and uh, in your opinion like uh, is there room for like sabotage like in terms of like if somebody is able to um, i mean crack your supply chain is there means that components can there is room for say backdoor uh, some kind of a backdoor entry you mean sabotage you understand backdoor entry ba- backdoor entry as in uh, access to your system access to uh, data which is i mean passing through it is so the one thing we have very strong before we even when we did it like 15 years back uh, everything was uh, rented in our company table was rented furniture was rented computer rented air conditioner was rented so the only thing we had is it so there we had firewalls the one thing we protect is firewalls the extensive amount of firewalls and uh, mirrored uh, servers uh, offsite servers we do a whole lot of stuff we also signed uh, with id id does an audit with us as a defense uh, we are very high up in the audit as well as the ip protection we don't host uh, our servers in cloud we host it ourselves we don't uh, we don't have anything to do with outside world we try to have everything inside so so we we, we manage our uh, ip fairly well in our office also so that is one that uh, we don't expect uh, uh, much of a tax what we do we immediately take care of it and second it's limited to the front line and we can go into our backup servers and the access access is very limited even to our own people we access rights and who can access we have a lot of systems to do that and we also have third party coming and hacking our systems kind of are you okay not okay we do this consistently see that there is resilient uh, network in our office and servers Let me take that. The other thing is, what we import, etc., etc., company visibility. I mean, there are sites which uh, you know, the government publishes the uh, import is happening here. Uh, those kind of information is public. What is public is public. It will not out of us. It will not go to public. And anyway, we buy components from registered uh, suppliers. We don't go to traders as part of defense requirements. We cannot, and because certification of components is necessary, conformity certification is necessary. We Uh, we need to ensure that every batch, when I say last 15 years, which component comes from which batch, which uh, Intel component we store all of them. Because if any failure happens, we need to know which batch is failing and what is the different different procedures. So it's a very deep process in all these things. So I, I think uh, in, in not complex sense, we understand this is happening, but we are also addressing those requirements. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining me on this call. Uh, on this call, um, as I said during the opening remarks, uh, we want to build an organization uh, built out of IT, and um, we, are, we, we are going ahead to build large products. Very very complex products in data and EW and in communication systems. We're looking at what is being exported, imported into country, and the same say can be built this in India. Uh, we're doing, uh, we've been doing this for many years, so we have a competency model which we are, uh, you know, improving and building products here. We also engineer a number of engineers from four five hundred people now. We have more than nine hundred engineers working in the office. We're taking question emails and training them. Uh, we are also creating infrastructure to see whatever development is done. The production also will follow quickly. The order comes next year. We are in a position to deliver on those things. So this this is a different aerospace systems. This big systems is a long term scale. It is not. Uh, we need to have an order book for three four years to see that we scale the company. So we are talking about one and a half years of order book. We are trying to see that we build products to get an order book for these three three years. So they can scale the company. We hope that we do this in the next two years to three years time. But we want to substantially scale the capability. The opportunities are large. We have built up competencies. We want to address the opportunities. Take it by the horns. We are very bullish about this. We hope uh, you know we are able to achieve what we want to do. But uh, uh, we are trying to run to build 
very large organization we have had. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your patience in this way. Is there anything further you want to call? Ask. Please address it to Go India. They are our uh, partners here. They will get uh, all the answers to you in time. Thank you very much uh, for this. Thank On you behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.